Hello everyone and welcome to Family Adventure Day. I'm Miss Sammy and oh, I've got a uh, other side. <laughs> I've got a friend with me today. Hi everybody, I'm Jesse. And what do you do here at the library, Jesse? I am an assistant librarian, so I help with librarian's choice right now. Okay. Um and today I'm helping Miss Sammy with the program. This was actually all Miss Jessie's idea. Um, she had to do a project for class because she's in library school right now. And I was like, well, that is a brilliant idea. So we should do that for Family Adventure Day. Alrighty. And for, I'm just going to let people, it looks like we've got some viewers already. Um, so I'm just going to let a few more trickle in if they need to. But the thing that you need today is a little goodie bag. So I know a handful of you um, came and got your goodie bag. If you want to post in the comments who's watching, we would love to say hi to you. And then it lets us know who's here. So that's also really cool. And then if you did not get a goodie bag, that is okay because you can request one after we're done um, with the program and we will send you this goodie bag full of supplies. And so some of the supplies, oh, and if you haven't, you want to make sure to go run outside real quick. We'll give you a couple of minutes and go grab some leaves because you'll want leaves for your craft today. Or what else can you grab, Miss Jessie? Um, if you have more crayons at home, you might want some additional crayon colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you might want a scissors. Yeah, scissors. And do they just have to grab leaves? Um, you could also grab like some prairie grass or some flowers. Pretty much anything that's flat enough that like if it were to sandwich between two things, it would lay flat. Perfect. Alrighty. Hi, Jenna and Dana. I'm so excited to see you. And I'm so glad you're joining us for Family Adventure Day. Alrighty. And then, so we've got, we've got leaves. And then in the bag, we've got this leaf identification sheet. And so I'm gonna let you take a minute to check out this leaf identification sheet. And if you um, can figure out what leaves you have, feel free to type it in the comments because I'm curious what um, is the most common leaf that everyone has grabbed. I know I see a lot of um, silver maples on my walking path and that's what I've grabbed. And I have also grabbed a ginkgo leaf. So that's what this one is. I think I have the red maple. The red maple? Mm -hmm. Yay, I'm so glad you're here, Brianna, with us today and ready to craft. Alrighty, and Ayla and Luke's are here as well. What leaves do you guys have? Jenna and Dana and Brianna and Kayla, what do you have? Let us know. And then we've also just got this activity in the bag. This is really just for fun. This is all just funsies. So this is something you can do after we finish up with Family Adventure Day. It's just a fun little printout and you can cut out the leaves and sing the rhyme and they attach to your fingers too. So that's pretty cool. But that's just a little extra. What else do we have in the bag? I think I'll wait till we get to that craft. I think we've got everyone and I've given you some time to identify your leaves. All right, birch and maple. Oh, oh yeah. I think my favorite's the red maple just because it's so vibrant. Yeah, it's really pretty. I had no idea that this was called 
a ginkgo leaf or a ginkgo tree. And so I had fun just learning a new tree because like I know what a birch tree is and I know what a maple is, but I didn't know what this tree was called. So even when you are all grown up, you can still keep learning about different things in nature. And that's one of the, the fun things that you get to do. I think I also have a, yeah, I think this is a birch leaf here. Your birch leaf looks very different than mine in color, but yeah. the shape is the same. Yeah, yours is still very green, whereas mine has turned. I think it was, most of mine are red or yellow, but I was, oh, and then this one is a white oak, but it's, it's brown. So it's kind of boring to look at, but it's a really fun shape. It looks like some critters ate some pieces out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Wow, bugs have to eat too, don't they? All righty, well, now that we've all had time to look at our identification sheet and learn about what leaves we have, I think, Miss Jessie, are you ready to show us your first craft that you've got. Yeah. Alrighty, and I will craft right along with everyone as, as Jesse shows us what we're going to do today. All right, so these crafts I really love because you're able to find things in nature or use found materials, which is like things you can just find around your home or you can find outside. And sometimes for me in my crafting, that is one of the best places to start to get inspiration for being creative. So I love to find things in nature, either color patterns or leaves or sticks. And um, I like to do a lot of crafts that way. So that was kind of the inspiration for the crafts today for me. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show is a leaf rubbing. So you will need a piece of paper. You should have at least two sheets in your bag. Um, and the crayon. Um, if you have more crayons at home, feel free to grab multiple colors. And then uh, I would take a couple of leaves. If they are fresher and a little bit flimsy, that's going to work a little bit better because you're gonna need to put some pressure onto the leaf. All right, so this is an example of the leaf rubbing and I'm gonna turn the camera down so you can see my hands. Does that look good, Miss Sammy? Yes, I can see your leaf and the paper right in front of you. You see the rubbing? Yeah, it's a little faded, but I can see it. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example with a maple leaf and a ginkgo leaf. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your leaf down on a hard surface and put the paper on top and then grab a crayon and kind of feel where the leaf is under there. And I kind of like to put the side up against the paper that has the veins running through it because you're going to get a little bit more texture in your rubbing. And oh, so like the back side of the leaf? Yep. You can do it either way, um, but I just think the veins add a little bit more texture into the rubbing. For and sure. You take your crayon and start to rub. You're gonna wanna play around with the pressure that you apply. So if you push harder, it's gonna be a little bit more defined. I just did my first one. I left mine with the front side facing up. So I'm going to try my next one with the, the back side facing up. It really is fun to experiment with the different ways you do it. Yeah, and sometimes I like to do multiple colors on the same leaf because it just adds a little bit more detail. Yeah. I know there's another craft that I really wanted to do, but that would have required us to send paint. And paint doesn't travel as well. 
but that one was where you painted the leaf and you would like put yellow paint where there's yellow spots and orange paint where there's orange spots or just make your entirely own design and then red paint where there's red spots and then um, once you had just a thin layer of paint on it, you would put the leaf face down on the piece of paper and then just press a little bit so you'd get those veins and the detailing and it would be multicolored. Ooh, like a tie-dye leaf? Yeah. I've also seen an activity where you can take a hammer and you would probably want to do it on like some concrete or the sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. and you lay a piece of paper over the leaf and you tap on it with a hammer and then you turn your paper over and sometimes the coloring from the leaf will have made a natural print onto the paper. Oh, cool. I liked your tip of doing the backside of the leaf. That was a really good idea. I hadn't even thought about that, but you really can see the veins better. So I don't know if you can see the... Ooh! Cool. I don't know if using colored pencils, you could also get some cool textures in there, but... Yeah. Here's my... Oh, so you did the birch? Yep, yeah, that's the birch. And then here is my ginkgo leaf. I liked how that one turned out. We only sent one crayon in the bag, so if you've got more crayons, highly recommend using more than just one color, because I think I'm going to have to go get another crayon just and mm -hmm. like, do more rubbings. So that way I can have a really colorful leaf rubbing. How are people feeling about moving on to the next craft? You can keep working on this one and I can just kind of start to talk about the next craft. If you want to, maybe we'll give you like two more minutes and I will tell you about a book. How about that? Okay, that sounds good. All righty. So there's a lot of really um, cool. So like if you start wanting to learn more about leaves, We've got some really cool books. This one is brand new. And this one is called Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds. And it's still got that new sticker on it. It's so new. We just got it this summer. And it has beautiful images of um, nature. And so this one is the cycle of a plant. And it goes through all the different, oh, here's some leaves. So yeah, I think these, these red ones are uh, sugar maple. Oh, and then this one specifies a silver birch. I think I had one that was a little bit pointier. Maybe this one. Do we think that maybe that could be a silver birch? Uh, not quite right. And we've got an English oak. I don't think I've seen many English oaks. But there might, out there, you guys might have one in your yard. And so this just gives a really detailed, really good images of um, nature and lets you learn more about things in nature. Oh, this one's about poisonous plants. That's cool. Alrighty, I think we've got a thumbs up. So I think we might be ready to move on to the next craft. I'm really excited about this one because Miss Jessie made some really cool um, examples to show you. All right, so I will show you the examples for starters. So there are two different ways you can go about it. So you could make something kind of like this or like this. And you're gonna have all the materials in your bags to make these other than the leaves. So you should have a lamination sheet got the gray check marks on the back. And you should have some sequins. 
and some tissue paper. And string. Oh, and also a feather. So I like to kind of think of these as a leaf stained glass. So when you're done, you can hang this up in a window and light is gonna pass through these really nicely, um, especially with the tissue paper and the different sequins. Um, so there's really no right or wrong way to go about your design. Um, but what I kind of took into, what kind of inspired me for this one, the butterfly, um, was this book, the butterfly and moth book. And in here, it shows pictures of moths that, let me see. That one looks like bark. Yeah, that, that one looks like a leaf. leaf. So I thought that was pretty cool. That is really cool. And one tip I do have about this that I learned on this one. So I learned not to do this a second time, but you're gonna want to leave a little bit of um, an edge around your leaves or it's going to not seal well. So you can see that it's kind of gapping there. So the one where you didn't cut it at all, does that have a nice tight seal? It does. So you probably want to leave a good, good at like half inch at least. Yeah, this one's going to be a lot. I think this one's going to hold up longer. It's going to last. Gotcha. But yeah, so I'm going to point the camera down and start kind of making and feel free to just make along with me or wait till the end and then start yours. Um, but if you have any questions about the process or you want to share what shape you're making or if you're doing something a little bit more just abstract and free flow um just write it in the chat and miss sammy will will let me know what your questions are oh um, how do you get started that is wow. a good question all right so i first like to fold the sheet in half And then you're going to want to take one of the corners here. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the corner unstuck. So let me see if this one's a little bit easier. And okay. I, I don't like to pull the entire sheet off. I just like to pull half off. And then I like to turn the sticky side away from me so I don't accidentally touch the stickiness, but then you can either layer, there's really no, both sides are clear, so you, you can start with like the thought of this is going to be your front, or that will be your back side, um, but yeah, I usually like to start with laying my leaves down, because that's kind of going to be the center of my design are my leaves. Oh, I like that you're going to put some of the prairie grass in there. Do you have an idea of what you might make? Because you had a pretty clear idea. Yeah. I think this time I'm just going to kind of go for it and uh, make something a little bit more abstract. I think that's going to be really fun and pretty too. I think you can't go wrong with leaves. I think anything you do with leaves and nature is going to be pretty. I agree. Hmm. Is anyone gonna do something specific for theirs? Do you know what you're gonna do? Feel free to tell us in the comments or when you're all done today, feel free to shoot us a picture of what you made. And I would love to post these amazing creations that I'm sure you guys are going to make.
So is that going to be your front side or your back side? I think so. I think I'm going to start with what I want the front to be and then layer from there. Gotcha. But you could also start with your back and build up to the front too. Yeah. So what I mean by that is like, you could either start with laying down your smallest thing, work to the largest, or you could start like this way. It's really cool because it's whatever way you think best. You want to start with what's in the foreground and then work to the background you can do that or you can work background to foreground if you have a pair of scissors you could also rip or cut your leaves into different shapes Ooh. Run a heart out of your leaf or a circle you could rip it and kind of layer it Oh, I like that you're going from your smallest leaves and you're putting bigger leaves on the back side. That's really cool. Let's see. Kind of laying everything to front to back. So it's kind of hard to see what it's gonna look like until I'm done, but that's kind <laughs> of the important part of it for me. It's kind of a surprise. That one might be too big for it. Yeah, I should have gone the other way. But, you know, the stickiness isn't too bad that if I really wanted, I probably could pull the leaves off and relay them down. True. But I'm just going to go for it. I like that idea. All righty. And while we're sitting here crafting, I just wanted to take a moment to tell everyone about the fall reading program. I hope you guys are all signed up. It's the exact same format that we used for the summer. It's um, on a website called Beanstack. And um, the, or the, there's plenty of places to click to it from our website too. So if you just go to our website and click on the main page, the thing that says fall into reading, that is our fall reading program. And um, same as summer, there is the opportunity to, for, to earn a book if you read all 20 hours. And we are trying to read as a community. And we are trying to read one million minutes. And we're at... Um, we are already at 65,000 minutes. And I think we can do it. I think we can get to a million minutes. Do you think we can get to a million minutes, Jesse? Oh, I think so. I think so. I find myself doing a lot of audiobooks and graphic novels to get my minutes in. Do you have any favorite reads? Ooh, I think recently I read Hoodoo by Ronald L. Smith. And I, I listened to that as an audiobook, and I really liked that. Um, and also the Graveyard book. Mm -hmm. That on Hoopla, they have a full cast. So they have a bunch of different voices of all the different characters. Um, so that was the first audiobook that I listened to where they had multiple multiple people reading the story. And I thought that that was a really, um, it was kind of like a movie. Yeah, totally. And the Graveyard Book has such great imagery even without a full cast reading it. And like, I was really excited that they even turned that into a graphic novel. I have not read the graphic novel, but maybe that's what I will read next. <laughs> Yeah, so 
I really hope that everyone who is watching today gets signed up for the summer reading pro not summer fall reading program. It's super easy, and all you have to do is track the minutes that you read. And if you are a member of the Sun Prairie Area School District, you're going to one of the public schools. I know that you have to read at least 15 to 30 minutes a day anyways, so why not get a book for your reading? Because we've got a great selection of titles for prize books. Then after you finish reading your 20 hours, you just keep on reading because you want to get the community to a million minutes, which I think we can do it. I really, I have confidence in us. We only, we have until the end of November and where, yes, the tissue paper and feathers is for the craft as well. So this is the, the big main craft that we're, majority of the supplies is for. So feel free to use the tissue paper and feathers as you wish. And it looks like Jesse cut the tissue paper into a heart. I really like that. So you can cut the leaves into hearts. You can cut the tissue paper into hearts. You could also take the tissue paper and kind of put it behind the leaves. Yeah, I like that. I'm excited to see pictures of everyone's creations and see how people use the same materials differently. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the most fun parts about um, Family Adventure Day is like, I know for one that I did over the summer, I explained how to do a craft one way and everyone who sent me a picture, they kind of used the same base for the craft, but they made something totally unique and different. It was a toilet paper roll unicorn. Mm. And I think Jenna uh, turned it into, Jenna or Dana turned it into a mermaid, which was adorable. Is that a leaf that you just cut or was that tissue yeah, paper? Yeah, that was uh, one of the birch leaves. Oh, I like how you use the tip as like the, the bottom of the heart. Very fun. Oh, I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like at the end. Alrighty, I think I'm gonna make you a little bit smaller again, just so I can book talk a couple other things because there are a lot of other really cool, look at this giant book. This book is like bigger than me. This is a book all about trees and it has some beautiful illustrations tell you all about different kinds of trees. <laughs> and how they get cut down and just a whole bunch of different there's one really cool picture in here I wanted to show you oh this one right here I really like this one because it shows all this different seasons and it's so colorful and pretty with all the different trees so if you want either of these books that I have talked about feel free to shoot us a message or a librarian's choice and let us know that you want the tree books and we'll get you some tree books so you can continue to learn about trees and leaves and nature. And then I just wanted to show you my favorite tree, which I think is really cool, is a redwood tree. And they are the oldest trees um, on earth. The oldest one that we know of is 2,500 years old, which I can't believe is it's still alive. It's so cool. So that is how long does a redwood tree live? And this kind of tells you some basic information about the redwood forest and the redwood trees. So 
really cool. We've got a lot of really great tree books recently. Alrighty, does anyone have any other questions about any of the supplies or any of the crafts? I'm gonna go ahead and show how to finish. Yeah. The, the back side. Back, uh, full screen. So you can either, for this one, at, after I sealed it, I used a hole punch or you can use the scissors and you're gonna, depending on your age, you might want some help to cut small holes to pass the string through. Or before you seal it, you can take your string and that, I'll show you how to do it this way. And you can just lay it into your design a little bit on each side. So there's a loop that you can hang it from. All right, and this part is a little tricky. I personally like to pull it off very slowly. And then along your crease that you made. And the good thing about this sticky paper is if you make a mistake, you can sometimes gently pull it apart and re attach it, but I like to line it up at the top and then gently press down on the top two corners and then go back down to the bottom along the crease and gently seal it along the bottom of the crease and then go into the middle of the tissue paper and press and push to the edges. You're just going to kind of want to massage the bubbles out because there's going to be some bubbles. You could also, after you're done, set it under something heavy overnight. And that will kind of reinforce the edges. All right. I'm going to flip it over and see what it looks like. Oh, so pretty. All right. I really like the layered leaves there. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. So yeah, you could either hang it over a doorknob or hang it in a window. Yeah. Very pretty. All righty. Well, that is our craft for today. Well, a couple of crafts and a little bit of leaf knowledge. Oh, one other thing is Jesse told me about these two different apps called Leaf Snap and Plant Net. And they are right here. Oh, I'll make myself a little bit bigger so you can see. And they're right here on the bottom of your um, fall fun bag. And these are two different apps that you can use to identify leaves and things in nature. And I got a plant as a gift and I had no idea what it was or what it was called. And so I used the app to take a picture of it and it told me what it was and I found out that the tree that I got was called and it's called a dwarf umbrella tree but it's also known as an octopus tree and I really liked like octopi so I'm gonna call it an octopus tree so there's always cool new things to learn about nature Alrighty, well, I am not seeing any other questions trickling in, and I hope that you guys had fun with us. I sure had fun watching Jesse craft, and I'm sure you guys made some beautiful crafts, and I'm really excited to see them if you want to send them to us. Um, either send it via Facebook Messenger, or you can 
email me and I'll type my email in the comments. There it is. And um, yeah, so I think that's all. Sign up for the fall reading program and we'll see you guys next time then. Thanks for joining everyone. Hey guys, have a great day. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, so glad you sh you joined us today, Ayla and Luke, and everyone else too. All righty, bye guys, have a great day.